the three steps on how to get into paramotoring the right way. So, step number one, the very first thing you want to do is find the person that knows what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> that is step number one. Don't trust anyone on what they say. You want to actually look at the skills. Look up on YouTube, world's best paramotor pilot. Literally every video is of me, but then take and look at the skills of things I'm showing versus the skills other people are showing. And compare skill against skill, not he said against she said, it's skill against skill. The very first thing you need to know is who actually knows what the heck you're talking about. Because this is not a sport you want to just go learn from Joe Jimmy Bob down the street or think you're going to learn it from your friend who's been flying for a few years. Horribly bad idea. So the absolute critical thing is to find the person who is going to give you the absolute best and most accurate information from vast experience and the highest level of skill. So doing your research is number one. And what are you researching? First, you research who actually has the skills. Who's got the skills? Two, who's teaching those skills? So the second part of that is look at the skill of the students. Anyone can say, oh, I'm an instructor, because there is no license. If they're claiming they're a certified instructor, they're lying because there is no certification. And pretty much anyone claiming to be certified is a flat out liar because they're trying to hide behind a fake certification instead of saying, yeah, I'm an instructor and here's the skill of my students. That's what an honest, logical, rational person does that wants you to see the truth. So look for videos of people saying, yes, I'm an instructor. Here's the skill of my students to demonstrate the outcome of my instruction. If you look up world's best paramotor training, well, again, pretty much every video is of me. But don't go based on just every video is of me and super training. Look at the actual skills because that's what's important. Not just that I'm the biggest and best and most well known because that doesn't necessarily make you the best instructor. What makes you the best instructor is that you're producing the best and most skilled students. So you look at the videos of the skills of the students that I'm training as they're coming out of super training. You know, like Super Lee, who set a world record, he knocked out 530 flights by the end of his 10 days of super training. I mean, where else are you going to find stuff like that? It just doesn't exist. You're seeing people in super training achieving skill levels that almost no others acting as instructors even have. So research the skills that are being produced. There are so many out there pretending to be instructors where you can't find one single video of them or their students demonstrating simple basic skills like just reverse kiting no hands or kiting up a vertical wall or just doing correct run and jumps with all the correct technique over and over and over without losing control. So you want to look at very specific skills and of course I have videos on that as well. So research is number one. Look at the skills of who you're talking to do not listen to an idiot. <laughs> if somebody can't fly for crap and you haven't looked at their skill level, do not take advice from them. It makes no sense. Now you hear the saying, oh, I can learn something from anyone. Well, if you're intelligent, you're not going to try and learn from the guy that doesn't know what the heck he's talking about because he doesn't have even the most basic skills himself. So this is not the place to overshadow logic and reason with just trying to have a positive attitude. Oh, he's an instructor, so he must be know what he's doing. False. Very, very critical to look at specific skills. Okay. Next, get the best training in the world. Once you figure out and research who has the best skills, who is the best instructor that's producing the most skilled, competent new pilots, then take that training. Come to super training, doesn't matter where you are in the world, you go through the class, you master the skills. 
If you don't master the skills, we don't put you in the sky. This sport isn't for everyone. If you're 80 years old and weigh 300 pounds, you probably won't pass the class at all, let alone the first time through. So a good way to research schools is to find out how many people fail their class. If their instructor is bragging, oh, I guarantee I'll get you in the air. Really? <laughs> So it doesn't matter how stupid or uncoordinated or bass awkward someone is, they're gonna guarantee you get in the air. I would much rather go to the instructor that says, yeah, there's a chance you might not pass the class because we do require you to attain a solid level of control of the glider before we put you in the sky. So research the skills, verify that people are only being put in the air who have those skills. If you find an instructor and look at students who are being put in the air, who obviously do not have real, actual mastery control of the glider, that's a major problem. So, research the skills, then take the best training in the world, which is currently super training. Anybody wants to refute that, by all means, post a video link. Let's see any other school in the world producing the skills that super training produces. Either they can or they can't. It's not about ego, it's a yes or no question. Either super training is the best in the world or you'll see a whole bunch of people post video links of their skills meeting or exceeding the skill of super students. Now, number three is the gear. So you got research, figure out who knows what they're talking about, then you gotta take the training master the skills, learn about the sport from the person who knows what the heck they're talking about, then the gear. Now, you don't go just buy gear that you think is good. You should get the gear the guy who's the best in the world tells you to get. I mean, it might sound a little weird like a sales pitch, but think about the logic. Do you, as the newbie, want to be picking out which aircraft to fly? Have you flown thousands and thousands of gliders and done massive testing to really know what the actual truth is? No, you haven't. So you absolutely should not be picking out your gear. You want the best pilot in the world, who's the best instructor in the world, to pick that gear out for you and literally tell you, hey, this is what you get. Anyone that's like, oh yeah, we're not going to tell you what to get because we're nice. We're going to let you choose. Really? That's pretty incompetent to let the newbie choose <laughs> out of a zillion different life and death situations what they think is best. That makes no sense at all. So research who knows what they're talking about. Learn from who knows what they're talking about and is producing the skills and then buy the gear that the expert tells you specifically to buy. And a huge part of that, one of the most difficult things, is picking which size of glider. It's not something that you pick. You don't just go, oh, I'm this age and I'm this weight. Because there's many factors. Age, weight, and altitude are three of them, but the biggest is skill level. At super training, we don't just chuck you up in the sky on one huge gigantic glider and go, oh yeah, you're a pilot. No, you work down glider size after glider size after glider size as your skills progress. Like Super Lee, who knocked out 530 flights by the end of his 10 days of super training, never touched a glider in his life, graduated with 530 flights. But it's a lot more than just those flights. He started on an extra large, he graduated flying an extra, 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 extra small, which is critical because the smaller gliders allow you to penetrate stronger, more violent conditions. So for safety, you want to be on a smaller glider, but you should not be the one picking where your skill level is at. You want the guy that knows what he's talking about who trained you assessing your skills and going, okay, this is the size you really would be safest at for your age, altitude, weight, and your skill level that I've seen and verified. So those are the three ways to get into paramotoring the right way. Research who knows what they're talking about, 
learn from the best in the world that knows what they're talking about, and then let the best in the world pick out the correct gear for you. Then you will have stacked all the odds in your favor as much as possible. That's how to get into paramotoring the right way. There are lots of seriously injured and dead people who ignored that very simple, logical path to success. If you don't research who knows what they're talking about and learn from some Jimmy Bob who pretends to be an instructor when he doesn't actually train anybody, and then you just get whatever gear you happen to see, you're stacking all the odds against yourself, not in your favor. So that's the correct way to get into the paramotoring, or you now know the absolute worst way, which is to ignore those three things. So do it right, and let's go fly and have a blast and enjoy it and feel the confidence of having the skills to feel safe and feel in control. That's what makes it fun, because this is not fun to not feel in control and not really have the skills to fully control that glider. So do it right, give us a call, 800-707-2525, or I challenge you to post a video link of someone who's better. Show me the skill of their students meeting or exceeding the skill of super students. Show me someone that's outdoing what I show in my videos. Either they're better or they're not. Either the training is better or it's not. So I challenge you, if you want to argue with super training being the best in the world, well, let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. Let's debate it. Show me the videos. Let's compare skill against skill and do it logically and rationally and not emotionally. Those who make emotional decisions in aviation are those who end up dead with the highest chance. So do it right. Challenge me. Have the character and self-confidence to seek the truth and not be emotional, emotional about what that truth is. Do it right. Have a blast. And do it as safely as possible. Let's go flying.